Hey, Floyd. Whoa. Uh, how you Holy doing? Holy smokes. This is amazing. We thought we'd buy you a new house. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> You're very welcome. Come on over. Let's take a look. Okay. Surprise. This is Walt Disney's house that he built in 1932. Wow. I know. I'd heard about the house, read about it, but to see it in person, this is very, very special. It was before Snow White. You know, it's before, I think before like Three Little Pigs were around that time. <laughs> so he's like coming home from the Snow White premiere. Yeah to this house. And then he lives here all the way through the war, all the way through Dumbo and Fantasia and... Yeah. It's crazy. Let's go inside and see what's going on. Let's go inside. This is so fun. Ooh. Hope the alarm's not on. Yes. Oh, man. <laughs> Look at this. Wow. Talk about Disney magic. I know. This Isn't that amazing? is magical. It's like real Disney magic. Yeah. This is it. Out of a fairy tale. <laughs> I know. A real life fairy tale. And look at the ceiling. Wow. It's like all original. Yeah. Yeah, it's like living Disney history. Yeah. Okay, great. Takes you back. <laughs> all the way back. Now we'll go from here into the living room. Okay. Okay, here's a question. If you were your 15-year-old self and were standing right where you are right now, like, what would you be thinking? You're, you're, you're in Walt Disney's home, and, uh, you know, you, you would almost expect Walt to come walking, walking out from someplace, somewhere. Crazy, you know? yeah. And, and Walt saying, what are you doing in my house? <laughs> <laughs> totally. And you're in Santa Barbara and come to work for the studio, and he kind of plucks you up into the story department, doesn't he? Uh, not right away. Oh, no, tell me about I that. Was, <laughs> I came to Disney like all the other young boys and girls to be a, an apprentice in-betweener. Right, right, right. And that's where everybody started, at the bottom. Mm -hmm. So keep in mind, I was at Disney a decade, a decade before Walt Disney even knew sure. I was there. Uh, started in 1956. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until 1966 that our paths crossed. Wow, yeah. really? So right at the end of his life then? Yeah, really. It was the last year of Walt's life. Didn't know it at the time. Yeah. Nobody knew. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that's when I got uh, recruited for the story department. You must have been like amazed, shocked, and thrilled. All, yeah, all of the above. <laughs> that, is, that is for certain. You know, I learned a lot from Walt Disney. Walt had a way of asking very interesting questions. And he's a tough guy to second guess. Uh, a lot of the times people thought he was grumpy and grouchy and didn't want to be bothered. But it wasn't that, it's because he was lost in thought. Yeah. He was deep in thought, thinking about some project or plan he wanted to do, some film he wanted to make. That's why it was hard to pin down exactly who Walt Disney was, because he was all those things. So we're in his living room, and, and you think the history that must have happened in here. Yeah. Stokowski sat here while they were making oh, um, yeah. Fantasia. Fantasia. Yeah. World War II, you know, you have to remember this was when Mickey Mouse was a huge hit. Yeah. The depression was on, the financial depression. Yeah. So this house was built by unemployed carpenters and laborers, and, and he had a studio full of unemployed artists that were making Mickey Mouse shorts. And yeah. They were doing so well because everybody wanted to kind of escape the depression, right, right, yeah. which I think is so incredible. There's a screening room here. I mean, I looked before we came and we have to go find it because I think it's just around the corner. Again, I'm always amazed by how tight and compact this little home is. When you see some of the massive homes that, <laughs> that are being built today. Okay, here it oh, is. Oh, cozy. This is the place. Yeah. Let's go open those doors. I'm going to have you open them because then if anybody gets kicked out, it would be yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, look at oh, that. Oh, cool. The screen oh. is here still. Amazing. Is that the original screen? It looks like it. It looks like it hasn't been changed. Yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of rumpled and wrinkly and yep. stained. That is so cool. And speaking of, of screening films, did you know that in the 50s, any Disney employee could check out a 16 millimeter print of a Disney feature Even film? Even in the 70s when I started. Really, really. And what did you do? Did you take them home for parties and things? Or? Yeah, yeah, you know, a kid's birthday party, holiday celebration. 
All you needed was, and I happened to have my own 16 millimeter projector. So I, I don't know why it was so rare in those days because they were there, they were affordable. So I had my own Bell and Howell projector and I would check out a Disney feature film. And of course, all of my friends would be thrilled. I mean, because keep in mind, we're talking about the days before DVDs, before you could watch a Disney film on television. We're starting to sound like old guys. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but that's because I am an old guy. No, so no, no, I, no, I, I, so. I, I fess up to it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I am a Disney codger. Not, then, not so much a legend as a codger, but uh, uh, I think but I, I'm, but I, I'm would, proud. I would own the legend title too, because <laughs> I think you're qualified. Oh, there's one thing I want to show you just outside this door. Uh, yeah, there's that picture, really famous picture, the most famous picture of Walt with Mickey Mouse's shadow on the wall. That was taken right here in this doorway. And the silhouette of Mickey was here? Was in this window. And so if you put your left hand on your hip, yes, and stand right where you're standing, that's exactly where Walt Disney stood during that really famous picture. Eat your heart on Brian Coogler. Here's the dining room. Oh yeah. You know, you, you can think of like uh, Princess Aurora might be having tea here. It kind of looks like it, yeah, you it get does. very much. And there's another ceiling. Yeah. Look at that. Once again, something out of a European fairy tale. Well, he, when he was in this house, he went to Europe. He did that big 1935 trip over there where he brought back like hundreds of books and reference for Pinocchio and Snow White and all that stuff. So he was really into Europe. Yeah. When he moved out of this house in 1950, he was post-war, he was done with a strike, he was done with the war, and all of a sudden he's building this kind of mid-century house in Home of the Hills. So yeah. that was a really interesting perspective, I thought, yeah. that now he's a futurist. Right, right. He, made a, he made a clean break. From, What's the from, deal with from that? From his uh, European past. Yeah. And you could see that in the films he was making and, and, and the theme park attractions. Yeah. It was, it was all different and we were headed for a big, you know, bold, beautiful tomorrow. All right, well, I want to go outside because there's a little surprise out there that I've heard about. And um, I know you knew Diane Disney Miller and so did I, and she was, um, really a treasure and this was really her house in a big way because she was born yeah. here and lived here until she was you know 17 or so right and um, there's a little special treat outside that I want you to see so let's okay. go that was the segue wasn't it good segue thank you so here it is this is Diane and Sharon's playhouse and it's still here so the uh, story behind that is his uh, carpenters came up on Christmas which was you know, he was, the, he was the boss, like you said. Yeah. And he would say, go up and build a house for my daughter. And they did. And, yes, um, and Diane said once the, she woke up on Christmas morning and went inside, and uh, there was a, t a sink inside and a kitchen. And there was a telephone, <laughs> and the phone rang, and it was Santa Claus. Oh, no. <laughs> on the phone in her own house. So it's unbelievable. It's still here, but there it is. That's Diane's little playhouse. That's what happens when your dad is Walt Disney. You know, and the other interesting thing I heard is the Disney Vacation Club, actually, you can use your points and stay in Diane's Playhouse uh, right over there. I'm just kidding. <laughs> you can't do that anymore. I wouldn't, wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> wouldn't that? Yeah. <laughs> that should be like a, a, like a Disney Vacation Club premium to yeah, stay in Diane's. Yeah, spend the weekend in Diane's Playhouse. You yeah. know, I would, uh, I would bet there would be a line of people to do that. Yeah, talk about tiny house. We'll, yeah. we'll flash a phone number on the bottom of the screen. There you go. So this was the top of this hill, and how big was this originally, this, this whole like area? Well, it, it was much larger. Uh, lots were sold off. If this hedge wasn't here, the swimming pool is down that hill, and it's still there with yeah. <laughs> the, uh, the original pool house. You imagine who uh, took a dip in that pool? Yeah, one can only imagine the, uh, the uh, famous uh, Hollywood celebrities who... Yeah paid a visit to Walt's home. And, uh, but in a funny way, it was humble, because I remember seeing pictures of him, like with the animators and the animator party over there. Yeah. And you just feel like, wow. Disney films have a personal emotional connection to you. Yeah. Pete Doctor said that. Right. And so it's not just a movie, it's not just entertainment, although it is all those things. Yeah. But you have this relationship with the characters, so much so that you want to take them home sometimes, or you want to yeah. go ride on their ride or whatever. Yeah. But that emotional connection is, it's a little bit of what you feel walking through this house. You know, there was a, yeah. a guy here, he put on his pants one leg at a time, he had kids, he had ups and downs, as you, you've said, walking through this place. But you have an emotional connection to what he believed. Yeah. And especially you, you having known him, 
you're just a treasure. Well, keep in mind, that was one of the things Walt Disney taught us about his films, that it was critical to have that emotional connection to the characters. If you didn't connect to the characters, story didn't matter. Yep. Yeah, and he told us that any number of times. He said, forget about the story. If the audience doesn't love the characters, they won't care about the story. I think what makes the Disney films work is, uh, I think it's Walt's own philosophy. It's Walt's own belief. He, he was a, uh, an optimist. Hmm. He was incredibly optimistic. I mean, yeah, Walt was a dreamer and a builder, but he was also an optimist. He always saw the good in things. Yeah. And he always looked for that happy ending. And he knew that was achie achievable, that you could make dreams come true, that you could build a future that was worth having. Uh, Walt believed it. He truly believed it. Mm. And I think he's uh, encouraging us to share that belief. That philosophy is still alive. Exactly. Wow. Thanks for coming with me. You bet. My pleasure. It's been a pleasure. I loved every minute of it. Thanks, everybody. See you next time. <laughs>